Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from the Lower East Side of Manhattan, the quarantine cabin here in New York City. That's right. We are here every single day with your Freed by Noon episodes. That's right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day for you. And you know how you get it? How much does it cost, Jared? The low, low price of tell a friend. That's right. I need you, the listener, to make this taste good for me. I need you to tell a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears, make it your Instagram story. Ooh, that feels so damn good. Make it your Instagram story. Tag a bitch, tag a bitch, tag a bitch. Tell someone. We're also on YouTube. Hi, YouTube land. It's me. Papa JT, the Wizard of Haas, the Sultan of Scream. I'm on YouTube. If you don't check this out on YouTube, you're wrong. You're wrong. Even if you don't, get subscribed. It might come in handy when you need it. You never know. Put some J Train in your rucksack in case of emergency. That's right. All you got to do is tell a friend. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. it. Also support the sponsors in my description of every episode. The sponsors for the J Train podcast are there. We're giving you free money. We're giving you free shipping. We're giving you free, free, free to try out some new products, okay? And they're all fantastic products that when you help them, they help us. They keep the walls up and we're all good. Tell a friend. Ooh, baby, please don't tell nobody. Tell no one, and you'll be stealing from the show. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, friend, friend. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. That's you. Come on. Let's do some emails. We're going to do the emails. We're going to do the coronavirus rant of the day. We're going to do some luxury lounge. We're going to do charcuterie chat. And then your quick hit questions. That's right. Let's get into it. DM my former teacher. Hi, Jared. Amazing podcast. You're so funny. And I tell all my friends, listen. Oh, look who's paying up. Pay the piper. So I've been searching for my person to eventually settle down with. I'm almost 24. Oh, you old hag. You better hurry up. Come on. 24. You're young. Have fun. I'm done with school and have my career. My friends who are getting engaged and having kids and finding their person suggested I get all the apps, including the paid ones. Still no luck. My friends also suggested something else. We all went to middle school together 14 years ago, and there was a young, hot teacher who was now single and now is all of our friend on Facebook. He is in his mid-30s. I did have him as a teacher when I was a kid, and my friends want me to DM him, and I kind of want to. I've had and enjoy relationships with men who are older, but would this be weird? I mean, we are both adults, and I wonder if he even remembers me, hoping he doesn't. Should I slide into his DMs, and am I setting myself up for failure? If so, what do I say? How do I play this right? Or is this just a bad idea? I will say a couple things about this email. One, you are 24, and your friends who are getting engaged and married Many of them will be divorced by the time they're 30. I'm I'm letting you know this right now. So all that happiness and the thing is for a lot of women that email in, they think this whole married, engaged world is all fun in the sun. Oh, we're all having fun because there's a lot to gain. Engagement parties, weddings, bachelorette parties, adulation of friends and family. She gets the ring. Ah, but they're all not going to make it. Nine out of 10 people you meet won't be the one. The 10th one ends in divorce 50% of the time. So let's be a little realistic. You are 24. You're in the prime of your life. You can have fun. You can meet some new people. You can develop taste. You Finding the person isn't the goal. It's finding the right person. And right now, they say the brain doesn't even form till you're 25. So all I'm saying, I'm giving you a different perspective than the reality you live in. I understand. There's a perspective that differs from mine that is like, well, you got to get with someone because by the time you're 26, all your eggs are getting weird. And it's like, okay, 
I respect that position, but because you're in the bubble of your world and your friends and you only see engagements, you're going, well, I want the engagements. So let's make sure you understand that their world involves sadness too. Their world is all not gumdrops and gumshoes. It's not. On the subject of that, I will also say when all of your friends are in relationships and you're the only one that's single, guy or girl, you always become this fun chess piece for them to play with. So when they look at you and they're like, let me play with your app. Ooh, I'll swipe for you. Oh, you should message the teacher. They're not wasting their fucking time. They're not chasing a fucking dream You know, they've already got their shit together. They've already got their house and their picket fence, and they're using you as a pawn to play their fun game of doesn't fuck with their own lives. So they have no skin in the game. If you don't work out with teacher, they don't give a fuck. I remember um, there was a time that a friend of mine tried to fix me up with their wife's sister. And I was like, great. She sounds great and awesome and fun and cute. And I went and approached her. And then I found out, I get a text being like, yeah, she chose the other guy. And I was like, what do you mean the other guy? Oh, our other friend. We told him to text him to text her too. And I was like, what? What the fuck's going on here? You're just throwing shit against the wall? I'm the shit? So your friends don't give a fuck about you finding someone. They give a fuck about you being their plaything to puppeteer around. You're the fucking uh, Pinocchio. And they're sitting there, ooh, let's play with your app. Ooh, you should message the teacher. Ooh, you should should just go on speed dating. Oh, my God, you should join The Bachelor. You should make an audition tape. All the while, their life's moving on in a normal direction. You're off doing fucking Bachelor submissions, which is crazy. So this happens a lot. So don't get – also, you're the distraction from their shitty life. So don't get carried away with all my friends are in relationships and they're trying to help you. All your friends are in relationships and all of their stories are not fun to tell. Their stories of, yeah, I got home, we cooked dinner, and then we fell asleep next to each other like we're two fucking siblings. That's their stories. Your stories are, I went on a date with a guy and all of a sudden he was like, uh, he was asking me if I, if I, if I like toes and all of a sudden he was showing me his toes because that's what he gets off to. Yeah. You're experiencing more variables, so they want to hear your stories. Their stories suck. So know that you're not that interesting. You're just more interesting than them. Your life isn't sad. It's just different than theirs, and they want to hear about it. So don't get caught up on the hype of allmyfriendsaremarried.com. Should you DM the teacher? Sure. Why not? Hey, I, I, I would say, are you setting yourself up for failure? Any DM, any message to anyone is set up for failure. You're putting yourself out there. That means failure is a very reasonable result. So have you, you know, do, here's what I would do. You don't DM someone just because it would be this fun little experiment on this fucking game of the Truman show. No, you message someone because you go, hey, they have, uh, they like hobbies that I like. They seem like a fun person. I do remember them. I'm attracted. Yeah. Then you message, hey. I was just, uh, I just saw you pop up on Facebook. Um, I know it's a little weird. Call out the awkward. I know it's a little weird that I actually was in your class way back when, but uh, I'm kind of stuck in town too. So if you want to do like social distancing drinks, let's do it sometime. Ball in their court. They can look at your profile. They'll either do it or they don't. If it's too weird for them, it's too weird for them. And then at that point, Leave it behind. You called it out. Call it out once. Is it, it's crazy. I know this is weird. I was in your class. I hope it's not weird for you, but I just saw that you were, you know, you were out playing baseball and I love going out to the park. Boom. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Jared, I'm a recently new listener and I'm so thankful for the entertainment and content you're putting out there right now. It's definitely helped me get through the quarantine alone. Just pass the word along. That's all I ask. Tell a friend, tell a... I got to find a song that works. I got to find my range. I was talking to a guy named Andrew on Tinder. Casual chatting, we moved to texting, everything is normal. With Apple's recent functions, it automatically generates a contact if that person has one set up. The guy's contact pops up with the name Nicholas. 
Naturally, since I'm not an idiot, I'm like, what the fuck happened here? I do some stalking and find him on Facebook and Instagram. He is friends with a girl I went to college with and Snapchat. All three of those had the name Nicholas. Having nothing to do uh, to lose since uh, he's a literal stranger, I asked and he claimed it was because he went by his middle name and went to school with a bunch of other Nicks and then stops texting me, LMAO. What are your thoughts? You think he was telling the truth or that he was, uh, f- for some reason, using a different name? Thanks again. You're the best. Um, here's, here's the thing about weird things. We all have weird things about us. His explanation is perfectly normal. Yeah, there was a lot of nicks, so I went by shit fuck, and that's what everyone calls me. I'm shit fuck. That's a, and then they go, how was your day? That, it's over. It's game over. That's my explanation. I owned it. That's, and that's the explanation I have to live with for the rest of my life. That is now my character write-up. Yeah, I was Nicholas, and then I went by shit fuck, and now everyone calls me shit fuck, and uh, I take a dump in my pants every Tuesday to prove it right. That's all, you know, that, to me, and then for the rest of his life, if you guys got married, he'd be shit fuck. But that's not what happened. That becomes part of your, and then he would have to keep up the, the thing with lies is that you have to be okay with keeping up the lie forever. So he lied to you. Yeah, I went by Nicholas, and now I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm shit fuck on the Tinder, but I'm Nicholas, you know, in my everyday life. He lied to you, and then he disappeared because he didn't want to keep up the lie. What are the, what are the, what are the reasons he would change his name? He has a girlfriend. He has a recent ex girlfriend that he didn't want to see, seeing him on the app. He has a, um, 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 he's in that. Those are the only two reasons. He's she's trying to fuck other people that aren't you. He's lying to you. But this is a let's not let's not act, let's not act like we're above having weird character developments within us. If you can answer it and then you keep it up forever, there you go. But if you can answer it and then you disappear, you're a liar. Ta ta. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Keep sending these emails because that's how this thing runs. On your emails, it's user generated. And tell a friend, Jared Feather Feather, I love your podcast. Really appreciate your tell it like it is opinions. Free, that's right. I tell it like it is. Free by Noon has really been getting me through this quarantine. On to my question. I met up with a guy just days before quarantine started. Uh, just days before the quarantine started after his resp- he responded to one of my Instagram stories. Okay. I met up with a guy just days before the quarantine started after he responded to one of my Instagram stories. As a bit of a backstory, I've actually known him for several years because his brother used to be my housemate in university. I never got to know him that well back then because he didn't come around often. However, he is also friends with both of my exes that I had a long-term relationship with and actually tried getting in touch with them to ask their permission to hang out with me. She tried getting in touch with them to ask their permission to hang out with me. So this guy knows uh, she lived with his brother and then knows her two exes. uh, And he tried to call them to make sure it was cool to hang out with. When we hung out, we spent the whole night talking, catching up and ended up having sex. Not something I've ever done on a first hangout before. He didn't expect to stay over and had to drive to London the next morning, so he didn't end up sleeping over. A few days later, he came to hang out with me and a few friends that I originally quarantined with before he went back home to Toronto, which is one hour away from me. That night uh, went great and as well, but all we did was kiss and he went home at the end of the night. We've been messaging each other almost every day over Instagram, but sometimes he takes a full day to respond to my messages. He suggests that we get together and break quarantine to see each other since we both live alone, but says his car is making a weird noise and he needs to take it to the shop, which he'd like to do where I live since it's cheaper. He says he wants to wait to come to see me when he can get an appointment to get his car fixed and says he'd rather hang out at my place because it's nicer than his. Yeah, and also that's where he comes. So that's why he wants to hang out at your place. 
It's been two weeks since we last hung out. We're both unable to work right now, and his car has been in his excuse been his excuse the whole time. Do you think he's just stringing me along because I'm friends with his brother and he doesn't want to look like a fuckboy? Or do you think his uh, car issue is a legitimate excuse? I just don't want to look like I'm needy and keep asking when he thinks I'll be, uh, he'll be in town. P.S. If it matters, I'm 30, he's 29. Any light you can shed on this situation would be greatly appreciated. Here's the thing. His car might... Uh, all the excuses in the world, a guy's plan isn't to like... You know, everyone thinks ghosting is the number one like goal. That's not the number one. Ghosting is a product of having nowhere else to go and you're too much of a pussy to let them know that you just don't want to hook up with them anymore. Ghosting is a last resort. That is, I don't want to break up with this person, but I don't think that we're important enough to break up, so I'll just leave and not speak of this again. What he's doing, he's being just nice enough with you for you to be an option for when it's most convenient for him. So he's even putting, he's literally putting you in his schedule. He's saying, well, he's putting down on a list. He's going, well, I'll get the car fixed. Um, I'll get my dick sucked. Uh, I'll go to the grocery store. Uh, check, 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 check. And then I'll go home to my place with my fixed car and, my, and all my groceries. And my dick that's less, that has no cum in it. That's what he, so he's literally scheduling you. And you're taking it because you're saying, what else are we going to do? That's that's also the issue with the quarantine. It's created this world where it's like, okay, I'll get it in for these 10 minutes. To me, if I'm you, I would propose ulterior ideas. You've had sex. You're cool with his body. You're cool with what happened. You want to get to know him more. He is avoiding that by giving this whole car thing and putting you on the grocery list. What I would do if I were you is I would propose getting together on a FaceTime call. Hey, and that's not needy. Needy is you fucked once and you're like, hey, can you go to the store and pick up a bunch of stuff for me? And and I need to do all these appointments and can you make my returns for me? That's needy. That's annoying. All your goal is, remember this, your goal is to get to know him more to see if you two are a long-term match. That is your whole goal that is honest, that is good, that is right, that is just. And when you're oh, when you come with that goal only, you you're never needy, you're never weird. His excuse will be weirder than you so all you have to do and so you say to him, "Hey, forget about the car, forget about that. When it, when it happens, it happens. Let's just do FaceTime tonight. Let's get on the phone. I I just want to see your face. I want to talk to you for a little bit. Let's hang out. I'll put on some music in the background. I'll have some wine out. You get some beers out and we'll do it. And he will and, and then his response will be a yes, a no, or a maybe. If it's a yes, go with it. You're getting to know each other. This is fucking great. No. Why? Do you have something else going on? Well, I got, I got, uh, so maybe tomorrow night would be good. And, and, and then he'll go, his, his response, let's, let's say he gets crazy. Let's say he goes, well, why do you want to FaceTime with me so bad? What, what's, what's the deal? Why are you being, why are you being so needy? Well, I just want to get to know you more. We spent that one night together, those two nights together. We had a really good time. I want to get to know you more. And then his response to that, to that can only be, I don't want to get to know you more. Any other response is just an excuse. That's the maybe. And then he's still lying. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Let's do this one. Um, quarantined and boyfriend just got deployed. Any advice? So I'm assuming deployed means he's part of the armed services. That's an amazing uh, profession, and I, I I appreciate the work he's doing. I appreciate you being uh, with someone that's in the armed services. Uh, the advice is the same to everyone. It's going to be hard. Make a plan. Let's plan out calls and set expectations. Because, and set the expectations reasonable. Hey, let's make a call every day at six o'clock when you when you're doing rec hours, whatever they, whatever his schedule is. Get on board with his schedule. Make a plan that's reasonable and achievable, so that you're not let down by the vague. We'll talk every night, and I'll and I'll tell you how much I love you every single day, and and we'll weep on the phone for hours. No, no, no. Make achievable goals for you and him to do together. 
That's a phone call every Wednesday, a phone call every day. Get him on the same at the negotiation table. Hey, let's plan out how we're going to talk. And understand that negotiation table, that contract could change. He could look at you and go, hey, this time we worked out, every night isn't going to work. We're going to have to do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm uh, off doing, you know, drills, sergeant, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. So I, I would just schedule it. Truly, what does this guy want? J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Well, I'm pretty sure I know what you'll say about this guy. I'd love your perspective. Okay. <laughs> I dated a guy for a few months in the fall, and then uh, and it ended by him just disappearing. I knew he was fine. Our professional worlds overlap, though we had no direct interaction. I felt so shitty when he did that. A few months later, he resurfaced, apologized, 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 explained now he how he's just messed up a mess and couldn't handle a relationship. And I told him I had no interest in anything romantic with him, but appreciated him explaining what was up. That's exactly what I just talked about. That is exactly what I said. Ghosting happens when the only option is to jump out of the burning house. Oh my God, this person's great. There's no reason for us to not be together, but I don't want to explain that I just don't want to fuck them anymore and I want to fuck someone new. Okay, I got to leave and I'll just never say anything. It's, a, it's, 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 it's an admission that he doesn't have the balls to look at you in the eye and say, I have no idea why this is breaking up. It's just not the match for me. Uh, we ended up sleep. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, and I told him I had no interest in anything romantic with him, but appreciated him explaining what was, what was up. We ended up sleeping together. I really was over him romantically at that point and remember how hot he was. He kept pursuing me and getting, and getting upset. I was dating other guys and it fizzled out again. Then right before the virus got serious here, we ran into each other at a bar. What are the chances? And slept together again. Now I can't get him out of my mind. He was again upset that I was seeing other people than other than him. But it's not like he was saying, let's give this a shot again. He has only reached out once during the quarantine saying he misses me and hopes I'm safe and healthy. I haven't responded. Why won't he leave me alone if he really doesn't want anything? Why does he get upset when I'm dating other guys but then has no follow through? And is there any hope if I still keep up a casual texting relationship with him? At this point, I don't want anything halfway with him. And want to give him and want to give this a shot or just move on. The sex is amazing, but but cyclical BS is not is not. But cyclical B but the cyclical BS is not. Do I just ignore him or do I say something? Thank you. Um okay, let me answer her questions. Why won't he leave me alone if he really doesn't want anything? He wants something, he wants just enough to have you at his disposal. He wants you at his convenience. He wants you every... I've, I used to say this all the time when I was single. If you're in a relationship, I, I pity you on a Saturday night and I envy you on a Sunday morning because everyone wants to be cuddled. Everyone wants to be held. Everyone wants to be kissed and told that they're a good person and told that they're great and told that, they, that, they, that they're the one for them. Everyone also wants to go out on Saturday and not know what the fuck's going to happen. Everyone wants a crazy night. He wants both. He wants to be able to come running to you whenever he feels lonely and then not have to answer to you when you when you feel lonely, when you want him to meet your parents, when you want to do dinner, when you want to do the things that progress a relationship. And really, he's afraid of having a responsibility. And you're the responsibility, which is what you would want. And you want to give that to him too. It's both ways. So what I'm telling you, this will never be different because he acts in a way that could lose you. If he didn't want to lose you, he wouldn't act in a way that would lose you. Right now, he keeps coming back to you because what he's done all these times that you guys come back into contact with, oh, wow, look at you. You're at the bar. We used to fuck. We should do that again. Every time you guys hook up again, it's because of convenience. It's not because he made the effort. So you have to remember that. And why does he get upset? Because the, he's trying to show that he cares more about you than he act, his actions do. He wants to tell you how, how into you he is. He doesn't want to show you. So remember that. 
You should text him breaking up with him. That is the only way to release your soul from his his grasp. Because right now you're living in a world where every time you meet up, it's friendly and cool and nice. It ain't nice. He's being a dick. Hey, I'm done with this. I'm looking for more. If you contact me again, I will not be answering. I am over this. I have moved on. And at that point, it's your fault. He's hot is not a good enough excuse for fucking after you are all upset that he keeps acting this way. You knew what he was doing. He didn't change his effort. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Let's do the coronavirus rant of the day. Hit the music, Shelby. Today's coronavirus rant of the day is about the picture of the coronavirus. I have no understanding why we keep seeing the picture of the coronavirus. It makes no sense. Was there someone out there being like, what, there's a virus killing people? Well, I gotta see what this looks like. And then they saw the ball with the little, the the ball that looks like, that has, that that looks exactly like the, the ball with the suction cups that you win at Chuck E. Cheese. And they were like, oh, okay. Now this makes sense. I guess I'll go on with my day. And also, when we saw it once, why do we have to keep seeing it? Show me a picture of other things. I don't need to see the ball with the red things popping off it. And is it to scare me more? Is it to make it look like it's a more serious thing? I know it's serious. People are dying in the streets. We know. I'm fucking... I'm, 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 I'm in solitude in a 600-square-foot apartment. I know this is important. I know it's, it's strange times. I've changed how I talk to people. I'm saying weird times all the time. What we need to do, stop putting up the picture of the ball. We don't need to see it. It doesn't help us. All it does is is, is like is to show that your organization is some sort of well-to-do news organization. It's like, oh, oh, you have scientists that looked under a microscope and took a picture of a ball with little spikes coming off it. We should not listen to what you say. We don't need to see the cartoon. We don't need to see the ball. We know this is serious. Stop showing us pictures of it. That's today's coronavirus rant of the day. You can send in your rant idea to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That's jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Let's do the luxury lounge. Now, if you're wondering what the luxury lounge is, the luxury lounge is a place where you can complain about anything luxurious in your life. Okay, you can complain about anything you'd like and no one's going to give you shit about it. You can complain, complain, complain. And we do this on Patreon. If you're wondering what Patreon is, Patreon is a place to support content creators like myself. What you do is you pay five dollars a month. That's five dollars a month. Five dollars a month. I put up two podcasts a week. I put up videos there. There's extra content that you're not seeing on my normal platforms. Five bucks a month gets you the extra content, more podcasts, more entertainment, more ability to take your brain, put it on the shelf, and let Papa JT take the wheel. That's right. $15 a month, you can sign up and you can ask me personal questions. I'll give you personal advice, much like I do on this show. So patreon.com slash Jared Freed, patreon.com slash Jared Freed, patreon.com slash Jared Freed. Let's go to the luxury lounge. Hit the music, Shelby. Today's Luxury Lounge is is about, um, I, I really thought I was doing okay. I thought I, ha- I have a nice apartment. I got a girlfriend. We go out for dinners. I thought I was doing fine in life. I thought I was on my way. And then the coronavirus happened, and I saw how rich some people are. And, man, I am not rich enough. I There are people with, I didn't know you all had third homes. I had no idea you had Olympic-sized swimming pools. I had no idea you had a ranch. I had no idea that you had this lake house in the middle of Montana. Who was to know? I was hanging out with the Rockefellers all day long. I had no idea. And I, listen, I thought being able to take an Uber and talk shit about people who took Uber pools was enough. I thought I was doing just fine. 
I had no idea. Everyone, you know, the minute this virus hit, everyone's like, ta-ta, got to go on the private jet, monsieur, and just flew off to parts unknown. And now they're on social media being like, this is really hard. Oh, I, I, the butler can't even show up anymore. We have to go get our own spritzes. I had no idea. I thought I was living a nice life. I was saving money. I was doing okay, but no, not rich enough. That's been the most disappointing part of all of this. I thought I, I'm not rich enough. I'm not part of the 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 hierarchy. They, there's no beach house. There's no private jets. Just me and an iPhone complaining about charcuterie boards. That's today's Luxury Lounge. You can use, you can go check out all the Luxury Lounges I do with different guests from the podcast. Go to patreon.com slash Jared Freed, patreon.com slash Jared Freed. Let's go to the charcuterie chat. Hit the music, Shelby. On today's charcuterie chat, I want to talk about Murray's Cheese. Murray's Cheese is a store in Manhattan that is a cheese shop. You can get specialty cheeses. They make their own cheeses. They do cheese classes. Here's a post that I saw. Some good news. It's Girl Scout cookie season. We're celebrating the only way we know how by pairing some of our favorite cookies with a few cheeses that make them shine. What cheeses did we pair the Thin Mints with? The Dosi Dos and the Samosas? Head to the link in our bio to find out. No fucking way, Murray's. I'm not pairing Girl Scout cookies with fucking cheese. What do you think I am? A, 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 a character on my 600 pound life? What do you, do, do, do you want me to tell the world I've given up? If I went up to someone and I was like, hey, what are you eating? They're like, oh, I'm having a do dough with some cheddar. I'd be like, are you okay? Has your whole family passed away? What's wrong with you? Like, that is not, that's not how human beings eat. Just because we're making charcuterie boards doesn't mean anything goes on them. You can't pair anything. There's social consequences to pairings. If you pair a samosa with some fucking brie, I'm going to look at you and go, Hey, man, you should see a therapist. You should go speak to someone. You have a problem. And if I was out taking two Thin Mints and putting some fucking uh, provolone in the middle, someone would look at me and go, Jared, are you okay? Have you have you lost everything? What's wrong with you? I know I know you weren't rich enough to leave, leave New York City on your private jet, but we thought things were doing fine enough. Murray's Cheese... Stop bringing these bullshit, cockamangy fucking mashups that no one asks for that make us look sad. That's today's charcuterie chat. We do a charcuterie chat every single day here on the J Train Podcast. So you can send in yours to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. That's jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. We're here at the end of the episode. Let's do some quick hit questions. That's right. And then, do we have some poetry for the end? We might. Um, no, we don't. Okay, let's do the quick hit questions. These are quick hit questions I take over my Instagram. Hit the music, Shelby. How long should I keep up dating app small talk during the quarantine? Dating app small talk should be like, you know, three scrolls of the page. And at a certain point, you go, hey, here's my number. Let's do a FaceTime sometime this week. There's got to be a point where you, hey, nice to meet you. Where are you doing quarantine? Fun conversation, fun conversation, fun conversation. This was a lot of fun. I got to go eat dinner. Here's my number. Let's do a FaceTime sometime this week. Now you've pitched it. All of this thing, Once you, you got to get used to the rhythm. Once you have the rhythm of the dance of the online talk, then you're good. And then the ball's in their court. So, hey, you know, so you're just taking the ball. Hey, where, where, how's your quarantine? Mine's good. I'm doing it here. What have you been up to? Oh, yeah, I, I, I spend all day doing nothing, too. What are you doing? Oh, they, they, uh, well, yeah, I eat a lot of food and I drink a lot. I'm a big, fat piece of shit. Oh, you are, too? Hey, this was cool. I'm actually going to be making dinner now. Uh, here's my numbers. Let me know if you ever want to FaceTime. And then you're out. Ball on their court. Tips for quarantining separate from your significant other. Uh, 
again, this is the same as the person that was uh, the, the, the boyfriend's going off to war. Uh, set the expectations, set the schedule, make it edible, make it consumable, be on the same page. Come together for contract negotiations. Make sure you're on the same page. Keep coming back together to discuss. Hey, let's make it every morning we do a call. Every afternoon we do a call. Let's do wine. Wine wine Wednesdays. You know, Zoom Fridays. You know, uh, social distance walk Sundays. You can make a schedule together. And if you're not working together, then one of you doesn't want to be in the team. Do you tell a new app match if you have been furloughed from COVID-19? Yeah. Be honest. Be whatever your situation is, is your situation. Here's the thing. Everyone has baggage, but nobody wants to date someone who doesn't admit to the bags that are in their hand. So if you're holding baggage, I would go, hey, so what's in the suitcases? I don't have suitcases in my hand. I'd be like, oh, I'm running the fuck away because you're a liar. How to respond when a guy wants to sex with you, but you're not into the mood and don't want to. Hey, tonight's not the night. Let's do tomorrow night. Let's do another night. This weekend would be good. Once I've had a couple glasses of wine, then I'd love to sex. Is it bad to be a, in a constant text convo with a guy you match with and can't see for a few months? I don't think it's bad. I think it's bad if you guys don't change it up. If you're not saying, hey, like, like, like I think a really good idea right now would be to get two of your friends that are single and asking this guy to get two of his friends that are single, do a six-person Zoom meeting, and then play a fun card game or play a Cards Against Humanity or go play, you know, for the You Up podcast, my other podcast, we have a, a Red Flag Deal Breaker. Play with the whole game. Play some sort of game with a bunch of people you've never met before. That's fun. And the people that you trust and people that he trusts, and maybe something comes out of it. But at the same time, all you're doing is wasting a little time and getting to know each other a little bit more and seeing if they'll make the effort that maybe you should that you're making. Um What's your favorite quarantine snack? I am crushing everything bagel pretzel chips. They're they're I'm crushing everything they're the uh, gluten-free everything ba oh no, I'll do. There's two snacks I'm crushing right now. Every gluten free, everything bagel, pretzel crisps with baba ganoush, crushing that. Also, banana buddies. I don't know if you got. Oh no, banana babies. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what banana babies are. Banana babies are a chocolate covered banana. They're about yay big, and there is nothing more fun than talking about your girlfriend eating a banana baby. And all you got to do, oh, I love watching you suck down a banana baby. Oh, look at how you gobble a banana baby clean. Oh, nom, 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 banana baby muncha. I've been saying that for now two days to my girlfriend, and we have a nice little laugh. Um... Good games to play with boyfriend during quarantine. Uh, that whole banana baby game is a lot of fun. Um, I would say, you know, have a night where you guys just get totally fucked up together. Why not? I've been doing it. Every Saturday, I have, like, woken up, started drinking, and then I don't stop until my head hits the pillow. And I think we've been having a good time with it. Um, Fifth date guy... Uh, should men be embarrassed to watch shows like The Bachelor and Real Housewives of New York? Seems like a pointed question. No. I think if you're embarrassed of watching those shows, you don't get those shows. Like, I I do, I, I talk on stage about, like, reality shows, and what you notice is the least confident people have to let you know they don't watch The Bachelor. So they'll go, so I'll be like, hey, I like The Bachelor. And someone will have to go, boo, oh, hiss, 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 Heyman. And you're like, dude, okay. What is, what, do you want to let everyone know? That's, like, like, that's the equivalent of someone going, I don't have a small penis. My penis is huge. Like to me, it's like someone who lacks confidence can't understand why someone would like a show that's different than their own. Is it weird to be gutted by your parents' separation if you're 27 years old and live on your own? Not at all. I think that's totally normal. My biggest fear 
is my parents splitting up and me having to make twice the phone calls I make home now. Oh, my God. Two calls every day to both sides complaining about the other? Sucks. That's okay. No one can tell you how to feel. Dating for six months. Is it weird he hasn't said I love you yet? No, there's nothing weird. Everyone has their own path to I love you. I think it's weird to only say I love you if they say it. I think you have to own your I love yous. Own that you love them and then, or her, and then you go with it. And they'll get there when they get there. Or they'll bow out. And that's okay. But you know what? I think it's more important to know what you love than to have no idea what it is at all. Knowing your feelings is, is a lot better because maybe this one doesn't work out. But you know the feeling. You know what to look back on. You know what you felt. And now you can repeat. That's a muscle memory that you have that you wouldn't have had before. Um, start it. What? Uh, started seeing a guy mid quarantine. Can this last after, or is he just bored? Um, it can. I think, in the same way, anyone can meet in any way. There's no situation that can't create a relationship. So this can, and it can't. All you have to do is own your feelings. Know what makes you feel good. Know what makes you feel bad. And communicate that. And they'll either be in or they're out. Here's the thing you have to remember in all relationship things. Whether they're in or out, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. There'll be someone else that will deal with your bullshit. That's our podcast. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. Keep sending those emails. We're here every single day with your Freed by Noon episodes. We'll be back next episode. Boom! Boom!